Greetings, greetings, greetings. Sound check. Sound check, sound check. How's everyone? Uh, Daniel, good evening. Jay Limba, good evening. How's everybody today? Feel free to join in. If you want to join, feel free, guys. Let me just share and then we get started. Hot pressure, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, but hot pressure. Thank you for your comments and your engagements. Patrick Munishan, Jay Wimba, good evening, good evening. I am fine, thank you. Thanks for asking. You guys share. Let's wait for people. Uh, Honorable Jay Banda will be joining us. So, if you want to say anything, you can join in now add you request to join and then i will add you if you want to say anything but uh by j banda balaisa chipata in the biu biu mulishani mr siwo by ronald banda mulishani Twenty one hours. Is it too late? Uh, topic for the day. Bring topics. There's a lot of thing going on. There is a devaluation of the kwacha. Uh, kwacha is continuing to free fall, you know, so we can talk about the kwacha just you know solutions suggestions what we need to do the kwacha is just gone crazy yes so we'll talk about the high inflation the kwacha we'll talk about the the drivers i saw a very disturbing video about the truck drivers or uh, i saw a very disturbing video about the truck drivers by honorable kason de Mwenda. and then we'll also talk about uh the strip club that opened in long acres if you are not aware good evening dempu ronald mulishani there is a strip club that opened in long acres lusaka so apparently remember the story broke a few months ago that they were opening a strip club and we had a one officer from Lusaka City Council come to say that was fake. But, uh, you know, deception is the name of the game for this government. So you, the, li the strip club is fully licensed. I don't know if it's a strip club, whatever they are calling it. Something similar to a strip club is... Um, now working they are operating in lusaka so we are just sharing guys to alayamba i don't know we're gonna get started pretty soon let me share and invite some people Let me tag some people and then we get started.
I'm sharing guys welcome if you're just joining okay and I'll play some music we are waiting for Honorable J Banda to join us so I'll just play some music while we wait hi hi we'll wait until we reach 100 then we get started honorable jay banda will join us and uh, we'll talk about if you're just joining in welcome we'll talk about the kwacha the free falling of the kwacha the truck drivers and then The strip club that's just opened in Lusaka. Raberry is Mulishan. okay okay feel free to join guys feel free feel free I'm 
Madam Doreen, uh, and follow and then follow it back, and then I'll try to add you. But welcome, guys. So, today we are talking about uh, three main things the strip club that opened in Lusaka, the truck drivers, and then the free fall of the quacha, you know, the devaluation of the quacha. Yeah, and I'll just talk about these three things and then you guys can come in. Yeah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening. Thank you for following the page. Welcome new followers. Actually, on this page, we are not followers. We are comrades because we are, we are partners. We are a team. We are here to advocate for a better Zambia. Zambia's economic re revolution is on the threshold. It is coming, and uh, we have to join our voices. We have to join our minds. We have to have a unity of purpose to deliver Zambia from, from poverty. Now, if you follow this page, or if you are new on this page, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself because I realize there are a lot of new people. So myself, I'm a human rights advocate for good governance. And uh, at the moment, I am nonpartisan. I campaigned for UPND with, on Matomola TV. So I know there's a lot of new people who are just coming into the political scene and they are confusing me with PF. I am not PF. I've never been PF. Thank you, uh, Vena Haberoni in the house, Sydney. I've never been PF. Yeah. And uh, so our purpose, our vision on Ubuntu is uh, to create a peaceful economic revolution through mindset change, changing of people's mindsets, educating people so that people can realize that. Uh, Politics is not a service. You go into politics to help your communities and change lives of people. Yes. And uh, if, you, if you follow me on my page today, I wrote something very, very important. And uh, this, what I wrote, I think the most important thing that I wrote, I think, today on my page is about how UPND have failed their probation period. And what do I mean when I say that uh, UPND has failed their probation period? I think all of us here, we are all adults. We are aware that any job or any opportunity, when you start, especially a job, you have a, prob a probation period. Now, a probation period, there are certain things that you're supposed to meet. When you are starting something, you have to test yourself. It's like a litmus test. And uh, we have seen that uh, this government has failed lamentably. It is two and a half years. Look at where we are. So do not follow a person. Follow the vision of the person. Let us look at facts. As Zambians, if we continue cheering people, 
because of a region, because of a tribe, we are going nowhere. We are going nowhere. We are 59 years of independence. And uh, it's a shame to see how our economy is doing after 59 years of independence. And uh, I attribute the failure of our economy largely to politics of regionalism and the tribalism and the personalities. So, so I am here to educate you and you in turn, hopefully you will see my point because Zambia is bigger than all of us. Zambia is bigger than ECL. Zambia is bigger than HH. We have to take our country out of poverty and we can only take take our country out of poverty when we as Zambians begin to see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is there is enough wealth for all Zambians if we all come together and we have one purpose, which is an economic revolution for our country. I am here and hammering on this because yesterday, a list came out of the fastest growing economies in the world. A pro, a, a, what is that? It's a, it's a pro project projection. Yes, that's the word. So yesterday, there is a projection which has come out of the fastest growing economies in the world in 2024. And Zambia is not on the list. And this saddens my heart. It saddens my heart that uh, we are not on the list of that will be among the fastest growing economies in the world in 2024. So this is where we should all sit down and think, what are we doing wrong? How come we are not on the list of the fastest growing economies in 2024 when we have all this wealth and on that list of the 20 economies nine of those countries are african countries and uh, those nine african countries they include they include uh, rwanda rwanda had a genocide i lived through that genocide Rwanda came from the ashes to be among the top 10 fastest growing economies in the world. Burundi, these are countries who don't even have the wealth that Zambia has. But look at what they are doing. They are changing the narrative of, our country, of, of their countries. So I am speaking here because most of the, the most of the population in Zambia, they are youth. 70% of the population, they are under, I think, 30 or 40 years old. These are the people who have the power to vote and change things. And we have seen this in West Africa. Even if the way the, the youth in West Africa took over power was not peaceful, but Zambia has always been a peaceful country. So we as Zambians, through the ballot, let us elect youthful people to change the narrative of Zambia. Karen, how are you? Yes. So there you are, guys. Um, it is really sad. It's really sad because which brings me to say, the, the new dawn, there are two and a half years in government has not improved things at all. The probation is usually three months to six months. And the new dawn government, they have been in government for two and a half years, going on three years, and the things are gotten from bad to worse. So this is, uh, you know, Things have gotten from bad to worse under new dawn, including our democracy is diminishing, our dollar is free falling, the president always preaches the rule of law, 
and there is no rule of law. Corruption is high. Anti-corruption is not doing anything. So many cases have been reported to anti-corruption commission and no action is being taken. We have, we saw the impeachment of Nelly Muti and we saw the suspension of MPs. So, so everything is just, there is chaos. And uh, I don't know, the president need to do something. The president need to do something because we cannot continue on this path. Yes. So let, let me come to my first topic, which is the strip club. Again, that's it's a sad story. It's like sad stories every day. And we continue to be talking until something happens, you know. Winner. If you are a winner, you don't quit. If you are, if you have a mission, you don't quit. A lot of people come here and tell me, keep dreaming. You know, a lot of people tell me, keep dreaming. Oh, you have nothing to do. No. People who have a vision, if you have a vision or if you have a dream, you never quit. I saw yesterday. I was watching something on YouTube, and I saw. A picture of uh, President Kaunda with the Martin Luther King. Yes, I saw KKK with the Martin Luther King, and Martin Luther King said I had a dream. Martin Luther King said those words, "I have a dream." Look at where Americans have have reached in a foreign land. Americans have fought for equal rights and all the civil rights movement, they are continuing to fight and they are in a foreign land. But we in Zambia, we are being accept, accepting to be oppressed by our fellow black people. You, you know, the new, new don't promise jobs and it breaks my heart to, to see that uh, They are open the strip club in Lusaka, and young girls are working there, do or doing, you know, some things which are against our culture. A strip club is not a cultural thing for Zambia. It's not not a cultural thing for Zambia. Zambia is a Christian nation, and, and they are doing all these secretly, you know. It's, it's just a lot of lies in this government. When a wind came out that they are opening a strip club, a officer came in to deny it, and now we hear it's fully functioning. They are in Lusaka. The girls are working there as waitresses, wearing short skirts and exposing their bodies. It's just crazy. It's crazy, guys. So again, we see, you know, is this what we really voted for? For the youth to be working such jobs, exposing their bodies for money? How that, that is how is that going to, to, to even promote self-confidence of those girls, those girls who work in strip clubs? What lives are they going to have after they stop stripping in that strip club in Long Acres? Would they be able to go and have start new lives? Be, be married? I hear there are like 30 girls working in that strip club. So those girls, are they going to have normal lives? Can they walk in the street and people, you know, respect them for doing that job? Can young men go and propose those kids for marriage? And those women, you know, start a normal life, have children, have a husband. What future are we creating for these girls that, that are working in these strip clubs? Meanwhile, I'm sure all the 
government officials, their children are in overseas universities studying and preparing for a decent future for themselves. So what future is there? What future is there for these girls who are working as strippers or whatever in that strip mall in Long Acre? Ask yourself that. Zambia is not even a Christian nation. Yes, Ronald, but Ronald Banda, yes. You know, Rwanda and Burundi, they are among the top 20 fastest, fastest growing economies in the world. Yeah? Even Tanzania is in on that list. Even Gambia. Can you imagine? And Niger. Niger just today. Niger, those young uh, boys in Niger, they just took over. They're running the country and in three months there is change. Niger is I think number four or number five among the fastest growing economies in Africa. Niger. In three months they changed it. Meanwhile, Aka in the UPND, they say they want seven years. We are already in two years since they got, since they started. Three years, oh, going on to three years. We are we are going down the drain. Hi, Judy. Good to see you. Zain, I see you too. But Teresa Mulishani, we are going down, down the drain. Three years of UPND government kwacha is at 23 dollars 23 kwacha two and a half years now look at kunaije what happened they took over the new government in nigeria is there barely three four months they are among the top five fastest growing countries in the world in economies you know, over to Africa, where we have reached as Zambians, we just have to think of changing governments and putting people who are going to respect our constitution and also ensure that Zambia benefits from its resources. So, next topic. I just talked about the strip club. The next topic I'm talking about the the truck drivers. The truck drivers. There is a big problem about truck drivers, and, and uh, I'll just play a video. I think it's better if I just play that video by Bakasonde Mwenda where he's talking about the plight of the truck drivers. It's so, so sad, guys. It is so sad because nobody really cares. Forsaken and have been forgotten. Ama truck drivers, ama taxi drivers, Look at this video that I received. Vale kinama truckers who are right now marooned. Kuti arasi kongo kuba parkinga chaliuma. Aba bantu ba ba lai lokuwa when the UPND government comes in, bakala ba pera ama fifteen dollars per day. There is no risk allowance. But let's try in other countries. I'm a truck driver. So I'm a risk allowance. We're not going to Zambia. I'm a truck driver. We're far away. 
But you will not see because our government in a side of Fina my side, but they were post up a man, and I want Mr. Batamba Tamba, but I want a Tamba instead of her intervening. One and a Mish Valley, Mobile, which had a public Lavan while I know I'm taking care of them. One and a Mish Valley, one for a one to be so about the community. Brown. Otherwise, guys, Okay, 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 Enough is enough. This cannot continue. Let me give an example. The president for trackers in this country, who we know about track young seven president Wabo, every president to have a contract, he has put a shell of fuel. You will see that there's a cartel that has taken over Zambia, and these people are depriving other Zambians of benefiting. And these people have taken over presidency and they are looting the resources of this country with the blessing of the president. Zambia, let us wake up. Zambia, if we what is even worse now that I mean, Zambia, the by this channel, like this, who are in Congo right now, Baba said, the after by this channel, please, but let's pull us on, but let's pull us on. What has happened is that that owners, the government transporters, the truck owners, what they have done is now, what to be now, my soldier, my Kapukola, who could go, my no material, like to be allowed under. So that we are not going to be a cabo. I mean, I'm a transporter, I've been able to get my mind, the minds give the money, but they refuse to give this money to the drivers. To the truck drivers because they have got the protection of government. Government does not want them accountable. And we are speaking, it's high time the government took care of its citizens. And we are embracing this. We want to work with these people so that we can self emancipate our country. Together, we can mark Zambia great. We have the resources, we have the potential, and we will do it. In other countries, truck drivers are taken good care of. But our foolish risk allowances. But our Zambia, we never chula, say every day we attacked by a vampire. They don't get even risk allowance because the mono. So, so you hate people. It's so sad what's happening. Uh, you know, put what you're gonna talk one bit. It's like what kind of people, what kind of leaders do we have in Zambia, really? Like, you know, the the owners of these trucks, they are paid by the mining companies to transport the minerals but then, then these owners of these companies they don't want to pay they don't want to pay the drivers for working it is so sad because you know we were saying that PF had cadres, but this new dawn they are using the Zambia police. It's a police state. It is a police state. From using cadres, now we have a government that is using police to oppress people. Where are we heading? I don't really know where we are heading. Honestly, it's confusing for me. It is really, really confusing because, you know, it is a human right to pay people for work. It's a violation of the human right to use people without paying them. And then when people complain, you haven't paid them. You are abusing the police. 
say it to ma who say it to mo. So I mum went from lady and she went that these people they, I don't know what to be in PH over the power of one. I don't know what kind of wealth these people want to amass to the extent that they don't even want to pay workers. It is a slavery. If you use people and you don't want to pay them, that is tantamount to slavery. I don't know really, I, I don't know, you know, it's just crazy because I don't know what we can do as a country. We have, it's like them, everything is corrupted all over. It's worse corruption now because we also know here that Kasumbalesa, some of officials, they are smuggling mini meal. And when those customs officials intercept those smuggling, they are told that they are going to fire them from their jobs. In this new dawn government, we are told there is a high profile, high ranking minister. Cabinet, somebody in cabinet is actually smuggling mini meal and her tracks have been intercepted and those people at the border, they are being threatened to be, to lose their jobs. It's a breakdown of rule of law. I don't even know what to say once. So that's that. The truck drivers, they are there, they are crying here in the USA. Truck drivers, they are the, rich, the most richest people. If, if you are a truck driver here, they make even 20,000 in two weeks. Three, four days, they make four or 5,000 truck driver in the US. But if they are gone for, for two weeks, they come home with 20,000 US dollars. And they are just transporting ordinary things. Number in Zambia, these people are transporting minerals worth millions, thousands of, of US dollars, or a truckload can be millions in Kwachi. And we have truck owners, these employers, they are failing to pay these drivers. And when, when they complain, the government is sending the police and the paramilitary to beat them up. It is sad. It is sad. And then lastly, I'll talk about the devaluation of the kwacha. So the kwacha has continued to devalue. Is free falling, and uh, uh, ECL left it at uh, 16. Kwacha is now almost double 23. And I'm sad to say that you know, I studied economics as well, and, and I am sad to say that the situation will not change. Kwacha is not going to start gaining value because number one we are a consumption based economy we are not producing anything if, even if we are producing copper and all these minerals they are in private hands and then we have given tax holidays so really kuma mine the mines are supposed to be the main source of income for Zambia, but the way things have been set up, we are not getting we are not getting anything. We are not getting anything from the mines. So all our money is going. Even the businesses that we have in Zambia, the major businesses, food Grocery, we are importing almost everything. Grocery stores, restaurants. There is a heavy uh, presence of, of foreign businesses in Zambia. And the impact 
impact of that is that whatever revenue is coming from those foreign investments is externalized. So that, that again is what is hitting the quacha. So even if they can do whatever they are doing, Ukoba Bank of Zambia, you know, that will be, it is not a permanent fix. So we are producing, but we are not getting anything, no tax, and the dividends are low, 3%, the royalties are low, 3%. So profit. And the mines are, are being owned by private people. We, we are into the farming season and we were able to produce, in PEF we produced a surplus maize even to add into the reserve, but that is not the case. UPND came and exported everything that was in reserve. Now we are actually importing millimil to meet the local demand. And we have seen imported millimil. What that means is that Millimil, whatever revenue is coming from the millimil that is imported in South Africa, that money is also going as well. So we are at a loss, guys. We are at a loss. No matter how you slice it, the quacha will not bounce back. Let, let us brace ourselves for a rough ride until the new don't come government does put some drastic measures in place like one may be increasing the demanding to get a higher royalty or dividend from the mines and also if maybe they they, they cancel the tax holiday so that we start receiving money then we can expect the kwacha to start gaining value. Another way the kwacha can gain value is if this we are now in the farming season. I don't know how it has been set up if we are geared for a bumper harvest next year because if they have supplied farmers with the fertilizer and seeds, that can help. If the lot of these cooperatives which were formed by the youth, as the UPND is saying, Kavir and Mukulima, if they can make sure that all those cooperatives, they have the seed and the fertilizer, so we have a bumper harvest in 2024, then we can see our kwacha bouncing back because that is going to strengthen the kwacha. Once we have a bumper harvest, is going to reduce the price of millimil and is going to increase exports to our neighbors. But right, right now, we indicators are not good because the government is contracted South Africa to, to import maize for the next uh, 11, 12 months. So indirectly, this is killing our agriculture sector. And that is uh, killing the economy. So I don't know, guys. I don't really know what UPND is up to. Are they up to, to killing the economy? Or what do they want to achieve? Because all their policies, they are not policies that are going to grow economy. Whatever UPND is doing is geared to shrinking the economy. So let's brace ourselves, guys. Let us brace ourselves, is the bottom line. And I think I am done, guys. If you have any comments, our, our, our Honorable didn't show up, so we shall try to come on another day and talk, talk about it. But, um, yeah. It's just sad, 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 sad.
you know, it's, it's a missed opportunity for, for UN and UPND governments and the, the governance of HH. It's a missed opportunity because, you know, Zambia, we have everything it takes to be the world's fastest growing economy. We do have everything it takes. It's just a matter of policy, policy statements and implementation, being bold to do things that other countries are doing, you know, to separate Zambia from IMF policies, to demand the equal and fair business deals with all these people who have mines, to nationalize these new private mines that are coming up. Why are they not being nationalized? Soji light mine, you know, lithium mines, nickel mines. Why is there no national production? If we can produce those things, um, if we can produce all those minerals on a large scale, we can pay, pay off our debt and set Zambia to be one of the largest growing economies in, the, in Africa. We can be up there with Niger. Imagine even Tanzania is beating us. <laughs> I'm wondering, let's brace ourselves. Tuko sevani, bali tuwebeli. Parabe neva rumendo bagya. Yep. So if you have comments, guys, you can come in. Otherwise, I'll just read the comments and the sign off. Vazain, yes, I see you. But Charles, you are looking at wrong things. The mistake everyone else is making and has continued to do. So what is the right thing, my Charles? What is the right thing? So that's it, guys. I'm done. I'm done. Verona, did you brace for hard times? Yep. But Alfred Peary, yes, you know. But Alfred Peary, who calls her? We are dealing with uh, Katwish. It's so sad, you know. Thank you, Ba Esther Banda. Comments below, guys. I'm going to be going on the hour. By David Domumba, I am wanting to the move up yet. We are in problems because um, all the indicators that the Monica will be in. All the indicators are bad. Like there is nothing they are really doing that's gonna save the quacha. If, if they had a robust agricultural pro program right now, if they had a robust agricultural program for 2024, I would have had hope because Ngavalichta fund the cooperatives for the youth who have a pella, matava, na fertilizer, clima, ama youth who produce pampa harvest. Then we can say 
you know. We can be hopeful for things through agriculture, but agriculture right now, I don't know. Our Kalima is they are not pumping a lot of money into the agriculture section so that we have a bumper harvest. So Nakwe Nakwa agriculture, we have we have problems. So Zambia will continue to be a looting ground. They will continue to loot Zambia. It has been set up. Bahaka India has set up the loot, enabling people, miners, actually investors. They are not even investors, they are thieves. They are actually now they are even, you know, they are they are thieves to a point where they don't even want to pay the drivers who are transporting those minerals. To the port. Ni business yam sango shan mewan. To a point that these drivers they leave their home, but ala pam sevoban they are spend three quarters of their lives in those trucks. You can't even pay them for transporting the those minerals that are being looted. to lower Mozambian, we are bewitched. Because if you look at it, you know, the minerals are ours. My minerals are Mozambia. Hello from, from there. Babali Payenjanji. Bali Payenjanji. And there is a reason why the, the rail system has been killed. Because they were not benefiting. So these people killed the rail system so they can put the minerals on the trucks. So these same people, they buy those trucks to transport the minerals out of our country, to loot the minerals out of our country. And then even the roads which they are, these trucks are driving, they can't fix them. They have to go to Zambian Money Pension Fund. They have to loot the, the NAPSA to fix the roads on which they are looting our minerals. And the drivers whom they are using to drive these minerals, to loot these minerals, they don't want to pay them. What a shame. In, in the 2023 reading, we Look at these countries, Kuma, Kuma, Arab, Kuma Middle East, where they just discovered oil in the last 40, 50 years. They have changed their countries and their lives of their people. Why can't that be, this story be the same story for Zambia? We have discovered new minerals. Why can't we be on a path to change the lives of Zambians in the next 20, 30 years? But the path we are on right now, in the next 20, 30 years, Zambia will be poorer. We are these people they are not putting things in place to take zambia out of poverty we have many, many countries like norway dubai oman all those countries they dis they discovered oil recently in the last 30 40 years and they have changed lives of people so zambia should, should be like that too because we are discovering these new minerals everywhere and it's a duty of our government to start plan planning to change the lives of Zambians in the next 20, 30 years. But what they are doing will not change the lives of Zambians for the better. They are still facilitating the loot of the, our resources to the extent that they don't even want to pay the drivers who are transporting these minerals. It's a shame. So I end here. Uh, if you have comments, I'll try to respond to the comments. Yes. But David Mumba, you know, I think what 
understanding in, in West Africa is a way for Africa is going to reach Zambia too. Because by youth charo chain. That's why in 2026 by youth won't say be on the ballot vote Go to parliament and change the constitution and change this this narrative or where we have our leaders accepting to loot our country. So that is that guys. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Thanks for watching. We'll be here. We'll be talking. And uh if anything serious comes up, otherwise uh thank you so much and God bless you. Bye.